Hello and welcome to Kalkine TV. James Preston with you live from Sydney for the Stocks in Action show. In this program, we'll be looking at recent updates from the ASX listed companies and dissecting developments across the equity and commodities markets. Let's begin with shares of the ASX listed medical company Oscan, which are trading in green. The company on Tuesday announced that they have submitted its first module to the Australian Pesticides and Veterinary Medicines Association to start the registration of Dermacan. Moving on now to a stock that is trading up by more than 2.5%, that's PointsBet, the corporate bookmaker. Today they announced that its wholly owned subsidiary, PointsBet Arizona LLC, has entered into an exclusive agreement with Cliff Castle Casino Hotel. The agreement is for a 10-year term. The agreement features a first skin license to operate online sports betting in Arizona via PointsBet's mobile app and also its website platforms. Moving on from wagering into shares of early pay, which were trading flat after the company shared on Tuesday that it has created a foreign exchange and also is in the midst of establishing a lending partnership with global fintech eBury. Early Pay and eBury have entered in the, into the partnership to support Australian small and medium-sized enterprises and brokers. Early Pay offers business finance to Australian small medium enterprises via invoice financing, asset financing and also trade financing. eBury is the world's largest non-bank, focusing on small medium enterprises trading internationally. Also, eBury has foreign exchange risk management and trade finance operations in over 130 currencies and 20 countries linked by a single platform. The partnership enables EarlyPay to launch EarlyPay FX, which is powered by eBury, and that will allow EarlyPay clients access to eBury's market-leading FX payments and risk mitigation services. eBury has also agreed to promote EarlyPay invoice and asset finance products. Moving on now, and the share price of EM Vision medical devices are trading down after the company reported an update on the build of its first generation device. The first generation device is EM Vision's first model intended for commercialisation. It's targeted for use in ICUs, stroke and neurology wards, angiogram suites and also emergency departments. The first device build is expected to be completed within the next month. EM Vision's first generation device offers a bedside decision support and monitoring capability for stroke patients. It's also comparable in size to a cart-based ultrasound unit and it can be wheeled directly to a patient for point of care in neuroimaging. The company has also developed a series of accessories to support patient comfort. First generation units will be subjected to various performance and also compliance tests for expanded clinical studies moving forward. In addition, product suitability for manufacturing, assembly, shipment, use, service and repair will also be assessed into the future. EM Vision's activities have reportedly not been materially impacted by the recent COVID-19 restrictions in New South Wales. And just before we head to a quick, a quick break, should I say, let's turn our attention to the ASX-listed Papua New Guinea-focused oil and gas producer, Oil Search. Stocks of Oil Search have gained more than 4% as the Australian natural gas producer, Santos, made an $8.8 .8 billion Australian dollar takeover bid for Oil Search. Santos said it proposed to offer a 0.589 new Santos shares for each oil search share held by shareholders. Santos made the approach on June 25, but the proposal was only revealed on Tuesday, July 20. Oil search said in a statement that it rejected the bid as it was not in the best interest of its shareholders. And now it's time for a very short break, but stay tuned as I'll be back with more trending updates for the Australian market for the Stocks in Action program on Kalkine TV. Tune in to stay updated while on the move. We will tell you where the crypto craze has reached. Where the property market is headed next. What the world is doing to become more environmentally friendly. Apart from tracking the daily market charter. 
Be on top of the latest news and announcements with Calkine TV. This is Andy Liu broadcasting from Calkine Media Studio in Australia and I'll be hosting the new Calkine Wellness Show. The half hour show will cover topics from how wellness as a concept has become even more significant during COVID to how becoming vegan may improve your health and much more. We are excited to showcase our live streaming show to our audience of millions overseas and in Australia. Tune in to Calkine TV and join me. Welcome back, James Preston with you for the Stocks in Action and it's great to have your company live from our studios in Sydney. Let's turn our attention now to developments from equity and commodities markets. The S&P ASX 200 is trading lower on Tuesday, dropping 45.5 points or 0.62%. The bottom performing stocks in this index are Unibail, Rodamico Westfield down 4.53% and Virgin Money UK which is down 3.37%. Moreover, 8 of 11 sectors are lower over the last week along with the S&P ASX 200 index. Healthcare is the best performing sector while the materials sector is trading the lowest. Shifting gears and let's take a quick glance at the developments of global markets. Benchmark US indices edged lower on Monday, July 19 amid concerns over the COVID-19 case clustering. Investors sold off airline and crew stocks fearing that the rebound in new cases could lead to new restrictions and delay the recovery from the pandemic. On Monday, the S&P 500 was down 1.59%, the Dow Jones Industrial Average decreased 2.09% and the Nasdaq Composite Index fell by 1.06% along with the small cap Russell 2000 which was down by 1.51%. On Monday, amid fears over rising coronavirus cases across the world, the US Treasury bond yields fell to five-month lows. The 30-year Treasury bond yields were down by 5.58 per cent, while the 10-year bond yields decreased 8.35 per cent, and the US dollar futures index increased by 0.15 per cent. Moving on to commodities, and gold traded on a weak note on Monday between a strong greenback and a fall in Treasury yields. US gold futures also dropped 0.5 per cent, the most traded steel rebar on the Shanghai Futures Exchange for October delivery ended up 0.8%. Benchmark copper on the London Metal Exchange was also down by 2.1%. And lastly, crude oil prices tumbled around $5 US dollars per barrel on Monday, recording its worst day since March after OPEC Plus agreed to boost the production from August. And also September delivery of crude oil futures have traded 0.31% up and September delivery of WTI crude oil futures have traded 0.63% up. OPEC and its allies agreed to increase the supply on Sunday in order to cool the oil prices that reach 2.5 year highs as the global economy recovers from the pandemic. The rising coronavirus cases of Delta variant are affecting the global crude oil demand and the US has registered a 70% increase in infection just last week. All right then, that is all for now. Stay tuned with Calkine TV for more live market updates. We'll be back soon with more news on markets, the economy and diverse themes and sectors shortly. I'm James Preston for Calkine TV.